Thank you for joining our webinar. And uh, my name is Tatiana Fedorenchik, Director of Product Global Marketing at Virtuosa. And I'd like to mention that we are open to any questions that you're going to have during this webinar. So use the question tab and uh, we'll provide responses at the end of this webinar. And today we are going to talk about uh, uh, optimizing application lifecycle management and the experts who will help us go through the specifics are Benny Vasquez, Chair of the Alma Linux Foundation. Hi, Benny. Hi, thanks for having me. That's great. And Igor Kaliduk, Director of Cross-Platform Architecture at Virtuosa. Hi, Igor. Hi. Thank you for joining. Uh, we uh, Today, you're going to learn how to leverage Alma Linux to diverse, uh, for diverse use cases, as well as how Virtuoso can automate orchestration of applications running on Alma Linux operating system uh, from environment creation provisioning to scaling to updates and overall CI CD processes. So in uh, Virtuoso, as you see, we have quite an extensive portfolio of solutions uh, to cover both infrastructure and application management needs of our customers. So both of them are covered. So, but today we're going to focus specifically on application layer. And uh, uh, this application layer management is enabled by our platform as a service solution called Virtuoso Application Platform. So while building this solution, our team thoroughly investigated everything connected around deployment, scaling, clusterization, CI, CD automation uh, to meet the requirements from our DevOps customers, uh, from different IT teams, uh, software developers with a variety of different use cases. Uh, this turnkey platform as a service automates environment creation, scaling, clustering, security updates, and general management of applications, and uh, as well providing intuitive self-service panel for both service providers and admins of the platform, and also for the end customers, developers, DevOps teams. And uh, this platform is available as public, private, hybrid, and also multi-cloud. Now it's installed across more than 100 local data centers around the world from our certified partners. And it can be also installed on bare metal or, or any kind of infrastructure as a service. Uh, we have this platform right now available for automated installation on some popular marketplaces from Amazon, Google, Volter, DigitalOcean. So there are quite a choice how to get started with the platform and uh, what to do with that, uh, how to, to go with a hosted version or maybe to have their own installation of the platform. And uh, the main idea behind is uh, to enable different cloud solutions as a service. For instance, uh, if you're a web developer, web agency, for instance, working with WordPress or Magenta for e-commerce projects, and um, uh, you want to provide your customers with highly available uh, solution working smoothly and you don't want to spend much time on manual uh, steps, uh, setting up everything once again and again, uh, we provide this automation. We provide automation of such applications, provisioning and further management uh, for you not to spend uh, much time, not to have issues with complexities. Uh, uh, so everything is covered by the platform. Uh, same for cases like database management or Kubernetes cluster creation. And uh, uh, also as a result, customers, they create, can increase time to market. Uh, they eliminate uh, the headache around uh, infrastructure management in, gen in general and uh, improve uh, uptime and uh, total cost of ownership. So um, all these solutions are running inside isolated containers. And uh, we provide a set of uh, certified software templates uh, running on Alma Linux uh, operating system. And a bit later, Igor will show a live demo how all these specifics work in the platform. Uh, but before, I'd like to ask Benny to tell us a bit more about Alma Linux in general and uh, Alma Linux itself. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, and we're gonna start with a little bit of history the 
uh, for anybody that's not familiar, the Red Hat ecosystem is kind of insane. This image for me is one of the best examples of what the enterprise Linux ecosystem looks like. This is actually uh, more than 10 years old at this point, but from 95 to 2011, those are all different rebuilds and repacks and, and forks of Red Hat. And so the, the, the ecosystem has been diverse for a very long time. But the biggest thing, uh, the, 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 the focus for us is going to be on CentOS. In if you go to the next slide, the, the, the historic understanding of what CentOS was and what we, uh, especially if you have a history in the web hosting industry, you're familiar with this, this path. Fedora has have been the upstream, like the playground forever. Red Hat would then regularly pull uh, together a bunch of updates from Fedora and ship them as Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And then CentOS would take Red Hat's code, rebuild it and release it as the free um, unlicensed or not necessarily not unlicensed, but open source licensed version that didn't require uh, an agreement with Red Hat. And then in 2019, Red Hat announced this new thing called CentOS Stream. On the next slide, you'll see kind of how that Go ahead and go to the next slide. It, it was announced with um, eight and it's essentially, a, a, they don't call it a continuous build, but it sits, one more slide, in between Fedora and Red Hat. So it is more frequently released, more frequently updated than Red Hat, but it's not as, uh, so we say unstable as Fedora. It's not as up-to-date as Fedora. As users of CentOS, we still had that option. But in 2020, Red Hat announced that CentOS uh, Linux, the downstream version, would no longer exist. CentOS 8 and CentOS uh, 7 would be the last versions. And then they, shut, they shortened the life of CentOS 8 by about six years. So <laughs> we all... We all kind of scrambled and it was uh it was a very big upset for a lot of industries and it caused uh, a lot of disruption a lot of frustration and nobody in the web hosting industry was surprised when uh uh cloud linux stepped up to back a new version of centos a, a new new operating system that would replace centos so if you go to the next slide, you'll see here, here we are announcing in January of 2021 that we were going to exist. And by March, we had our first build out. You'll see this is what we wanted to make a reality. And this is what we did for uh, just over two years, as you can see there. And then in June of 2023, Red Hat announced again, and made, made waves again by announcing that they would no longer be shipping their source code as they always had to git.centos.org. And that effectively broke our build pipeline. So we had a choice. We talked to our users. We talked to our contributors. We talked to the people that mattered the most for me, the members of the foundation, and said, what do you need from us? And what they said was, we need compatibility. We don't need you to necessarily be a, a copy. It's okay. So what we now do is build from the same sources that Red Hat does. On the next slide, you'll see like a visual representation. We are both pulling from CentOS Stream, but we're building alongside Red Hat. We're matching Red Hat versions. We're, we're still achieving the same goal that we always did, just with publicly available and easily open source accessible uh, source code. And that's kind of how we got here. The, the, that allows us to be used by all kinds of places. Uh, as an open source project, most of us don't get like telemetry data, but we do see all over the place people talking about how they use Alma Linux, everything from CERN to <laughs> uh, uh, this morning, the the we found out that the Paris Metro uses Elma Linux. Um, mm -hmm. There's people using us for VMs and their like home labs to uh, 
just all over the place. Web hosting, obviously, is a huge uh, source of adoption for us. And um, from everything from the like everyday mundane, I'm running my home, my home automation to all kinds of just incredible things. Go to the next slide. You'll see <laughs> like, and there's, there's Bart that, that also runs on Alma Linux and even supercomputers are using Alma Linux to process and, and interact with data that is impacting our understanding of the universe. It's incredible to be part of this project. And I've been very, very excited to be part of it. Um, if you wanna use Alma Linux, obviously we are available anywhere you wanna go. We've got all of the images you could possibly want. And if you can find a web host that doesn't offer Alma Linux, let me know and I'll, I'll help get them, get us put there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Benny. Yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this news around CentOS uh, were like a struggle for us as well, because we are kind of, uh, our company is also a kind of use case uh, of using Alma Linux because uh, uh, we use it inside our system. Mm -hmm. uh, Igor will show it later, Like, but uh, in general, we also had CentOS uh, as the base for all our uh, certified templates. But uh, when we got this news, we understood that we need to have something, uh, something more promising and uh, yeah, that was a choice for us to go with Alma Linux. And uh, later we will show how, how that works right now. Awesome. Uh, okay, so now and um, uh, further, we'll see how Alma Linux with Virtuoso make it possible to go all stages of application lifecycle as optimal as possible. Uh, but uh, before that, let's discuss what IT teams and uh, uh, businesses uh, uh, should consider, should take into consideration while building a proper application lifecycle management processes and what challenges they can face during this. Igor, maybe you can share like yeah. your experience because you work directly and you're a tech person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I do remember times when more than 20 years ago, uh, the things were different <laughs> and many things changed from that time, but the, the, the good thing is that the automation came in place and uh, today we can get rid for, of, of many of these challenges. But again, so all, all of them are really important. So the, the thing is that deployment process. So I do remember how 20 years ago, the deployment process was really super manual thing. So the, 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 the person who developed also did the deployment that was always our evening of, 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 of Friday or something went wrong and et cetera. So that, 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 that was a really complicated pass uh, from that time. Uh, the person who did deployment uh, also were, were, was responsible for monitoring. So multiple people were were always like in a, in a team just who, who were responsible for the huge delivery application uh, process. Uh, it was really hard to understand how much resources application requires. So that's right sizing problem as we used to say. So how many virtual machines, how many servers, how many load balancers, what traffic it can, like the, the application can, can, can survive from, uh, how to coordinate teams, who will manage the access. Those are a really huge number of things that, that you need to take into account when, when, while, you, while you're developing the application and try to deliver the application to, to production. Uh, and the, the, this, uh, this flow and nowadays is automated. It was application platform. Uh, helps to eliminate many of these problems, or at least like make the life in times easier. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah and uh, especially, especially if you are uh, building some new application and deploying this new application, this is kind of lots of guessing that you need to do because uh, you don't have like previous data to figure out how much resources are going to be needed, 
what uh, kind of issues can pop up during redeployment or like uh, what you need in terms of migration if you decide to uh, to move to other cloud vendor or something like that so all these things uh, they need to be considered on the um at the beginning even and uh, that's why like it's great to have some tools that can help you with this kind of guessing not to guess but to predict uh, smartly <laughs> yeah. and and even if you are setting up something with data having the ability to quickly and uh, adjust how much like what what kind of resources you have is the kind of thing that you just did not have before like if you you needed more resources you had to take the time to manually build the server and install the os and then bring it into whatever your application was right like that's the kind of stuff that automation really helps with yeah that's true and i, I guess that's uh, also important for the uh, further development of the project is to consider mm -hmm. how you're going to work between the teams because mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially if you start some small team with uh, some project in future, you're going to grow and you need to consider how the uh, um, access rules are going to work, how the uh, um, different teams are going to cooperate with each other. Like, and, uh, um, and if, for, for instance, you are some uh, digital agency that are providing uh, the projects for the customers, you also need to consider how you're going to uh, re Re, re give these kind of projects from development to production and give full access to the customer, yeah. uh, especially if the customer is not tied specifically to one location where this project is going to be run. Yep. It's always better to be focused on something you do best. So if you develop application, just focus on application and not, no, not about the automation, about these thousands of things where other people have had expertise on whether this problem solved, uh, solved that problem. So the, the, the huge advantage is that you utilize the expertise of, of, of other people. So you, because, because many of problems they are hidden, they are behind the scene and you may not even know about them. So the vulnerability stuff, so you have to care if your, if your software is not vulnerable, the runtime, this, uh, uh, yeah, awesome job that is done by Cloud Linux. Alma Linux and Cloud Linux teams are just who 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 create the distribution and take care about the huge tree of dependencies, packages, and etc. So that yeah, many huge thanks to 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 your team, Benny. Just just because you 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 solved a huge problem for us, and we solve other huge problems for for people who who requires automation, so they could just focus on their on their like on their job, on their software development like directly. So let's maybe uh, switch to to demo and show yep, what, sure. what 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 are we talking about. So let me yeah, share let my screen. Now I can share your screen. Yeah, and as I said. So, um, just just a second here, just reminder to everyone, like um, before we go into the uh, practical part, please don't forget to bring the questions to the question tab. I see already one question there, but uh, go ahead and add more and we will come back to them at the, at the end. Yeah, uh, as, as we said the, at the beginning, so before... Before we had like CentOS was a base bone, uh, backbone for our templates, which were like used for, for our runtimes, and Alma Linux uh, today is 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 like a new backbone that we are using. We migrated all the runtimes to Alma Linux, and with the help of uh, the, their team, we can we can we can just do be up to date and can create uh, like these bricks uh, smoothly and. Uh, about the bricks so let let me jump into the in the, the focus just so you could understand what, what bricks we are talking about so uh inside the system everything is running in containers and uh, all the applications uh we we run inside uh, a kind of system containers so they are a bit different to containers that everybody used for so but the uh, the huge the huge difference to uh, to VMs that we are really flexible in resources, so we are able to spin up um, runtimes very quickly. Quickly, we're able to uh, like to to reutilize resources. So we we don't have pre-allocation of memory. So these containers are not like uh, 
then they're not using memory in case the application is not does not require them this memory so that makes us flexible in terms of uh, of resource utilization and we uh, with the help of container technology we solve that right sizing problem so having vertical scaling and horizontal scaling we are able to just to utilize the resources which are exactly required to application and the customer don't have to pay spare money just for, for the resources that are never used. Uh, here you can see the dashboard that the, the, the place where the, the, the customers are creating their uh, like workloads. This, um, this we call layers. So this, this, these things are layers of services. So uh, we, the main entity which we are operating uh, is called environment. So environment is a set of containers, a set of bricks. And with environments, uh, we like create applications. Application, which you can see, for example, in marketplace, it's always uh, uh, a description how these uh, bricks are connected between each other. And uh, the, the the platform allows just to work in more than way. In case, for example, if you if you work with Kubernetes with Docker and you use to pack your applications just for the to the container format and to to, to and to to use this in a, this way, uh, as alternative we can uh, propose a runtime which is separated from the application. So that's another approach how applications uh, can run by the customer. And the, the automation which we have in this runtime also eliminate a list of issues which typically people who are working with even more than approach in Kubernetes and the Docker approach face with. So because when you develop the application, you also care about the runtime. So what, what you need to run, you need, for example, specific version of PHP, specific version of Java, you need specific version of plugins, uh, components, libraries, open SSL libraries, and etc. So every time you you need to run the application, you care about the runtime. Uh, if you will go with the approach which is proposed by application platform, the runtime issue is already eliminated by the virtuoso team because uh, the uh, the list of these images which are which which are used for these semi finished runtimes. Is already maintained and certified by 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 the team, so there are people who always care about who, about vulnerabilities, about new versions, about the way how the version has to be upgraded from version A to version B, and uh, yeah, and huge job is done by Alma Linux team just because because we have with the help of them we have this backbone to to build these semi finished images, and. Uh, with the help of this approach, the, uh, the you can, you can be focused only on development and and management of the project in product project in general. So the platform allows to have separate tenants for the environments. For example, if you need to have dev staging production, you can you can separate the workloads just. Uh, in a convenient way for you. And uh, the team management is also a part of the system. So you can split the, the, the people into teams and uh, provide access only to that parts of the system which are, which are required for the team. So only for isolated tenant of development or production. So that's, the system is quite flexible that allows to, with the API, even to share API stuff which is will be restricted only to to, to some appropriate environments uh, as for as for deployment approaches so we need to eliminate as many problems as possible just to make the process the most smooth for us so we have deployment manager that allows to deploy applications directly from from web package so that can be archived from tar um, zip or something like that that can be wrapper so the modern approach is to to use repository for for, for direct deploying and uh, the good thing that you can spin up runtime let's say it 
uh, PHP runtime that will consist, for example, from database server, from application server. Let's say it PHP. Let, let's let's say it, nginx plus PHP. And uh, for example, something else: NFS storage, where our shared data will be shared across the clusters. We will select number of instances we would like to have. So let it be five. And for database, we can, for example, state what kind of clusterization we would like to have. So the system will operate with these bricks. It will automatically provision this set of nodes for you. And uh, when, and link. So the, there is a logic behind the scene which has like abstraction and allows to, to, to link this component between each other. So we can like describe in a manifest the way how to connect the application to the database and uh, to have this dynamically like flexible scaled across, across, for example, region or across multiple regions, depending on the case. So the problem which is eliminated here is of the automation. You have cluster of database, you have, for example, entry points, which are automatically will be added with proxy SQL. You have shared volume. You have, for example, Redis cache, memcache, something for, to, for share your caches. Your, your sessions, you click create, and you in the end will get the environment. So that's while well, it's creating. I will show you an example how these environments look like. So that's already existing environment with SQL. Uh, this one is just a simple PHP application. So when I have my repository, so let it be this one, uh, or just this one, or just this one, so it doesn't matter. So we have a repository. I would like my code, every time I push a code, it will be automatically, so it would be automatically fetched to the my environment. And what can I do? So there is a way how the platform can get like do a pull from repository on a regular basis. So I just have the node Nginx and I say, okay, I have deployments here and I want to add one of my existing projects. And with these projects, I can do automated updates, for example, every five minutes uh, for, let it be this one. For example, this PHP application requires a kind of commands or scripts to be executed on some certain stages before the deployment or after the deployment or just, uh, yeah. So for example, you need to run Composer and the Composer just need to be executed every time you have changes in your code. Uh, that's the way how that can be done easily. So the platform eliminate this issue just to, to do everything, everything manually all the time. Um, you can automatically resolve conflicts in case if something will, will 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 be conflicting with your local changes inside your environment. You can enable zero downtime. Zero downtime allows just to, to to create a replica of your data in the in the runtime, and just relink with the same link this data from all that to new one to to new version. So that's for big projects. Just awesome thing. To, um, yeah, the same for, for, for Java, for example, if, you, if you're a Java developer, so you are able just to add a build node with Maven, and Maven can also grab data from your repository in the same, exactly same way as for PHP, just directly to the runtime. And the good thing that, for example, a vulnerability, like zero time vulnerability uh, happens just with, with open SSL. And uh, you need just to do the update, update all of your environments. So in approach, in classical Docker approach, uh, how, 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 what, what would you do? You just re reassemble the whole image and should do this like Helm chart changes or, or, or just change the, the image that, that will just, that, that will absolutely change the, the whole, the whole runtime. With this approach, what I can do, I can only switch the runtime, but still leave my application like the in configuration remain this as it were before. 
since it was before the the the, the update. So I just click uh, this redeploy button here, and I can see the list of tags which are available here just with the runtime. As you can see, the all the tags were just done on CentOS, so new new all new on Alma Linux. Uh, I have my persistent data here, and I can just click redeploy. In this case, the configuration remains the same, application remains the same, but uh, the uh, but the runtime will will be deployed to to the one which is not vulnerable. And the thing is that if you need just to think about some changes that are important to be done just during the redeployment, you can also do this in a code style. So there is a specific DSL behind the scene that allows just to automate things which are happening there. So you can like interact with the deployment process. You can grab artifacts. You can interact with third party APIs. For example, if you need to register, register your new, your, your service after the runtime redeployment in um, some kind of monitoring system. So that's, yeah. Another problem which is eliminated typical problem. So you know, you, you need to know how much like resources uh, are consumed by the by your application and you need to configure proper automated horizontal scaling. So you can see on graphs how your application behaved just during the, for example, last two days, last, last months, and you can, can tweak a number of triggers how to scale application in mem just by memory, by network utilization, by disk IO, by CPU. So having this understanding just in place, you're able just to configure your automated scaling just not in a blind way. So you see exactly what resources are really a bottleneck. So then you, you do this automated scaling. So how many nodes you need to add and remove in, in case of what. So that's another issue that that, that 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 that's eliminated so we have also lot others that allows you to 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 get understanding in case if your application behaved wrong or or something went wrong or you out of resources another automation is about sso so there the, nowadays i do remember 20 years ago we had to buy sso uh, just for secured resources, many of websites were not using SSL at all. So today we have automations that allows to install, to issue the certificate and install, for example, Let's Encrypt just on top of your load balancers directly to your runtime. So you don't need to just go and do, do this configuration manually because even with Kubernetes to have the automation in place, you still need to install certification manager. You still need to just to take a look if the if the if the certificate was constantly issued because sometimes they, they you can have many of uh, request attempts and etc so there are multiple things which already solved with the automation here on behind so uh for the cases when you need just to trigger deployment from 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 this from from hit from hit hooks or your, directly from your GitHub. So there are kind of useful add-ons like uh, Git, Git push. So this add-on allows just to, 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 to update your code inside the environment in a bit uh, different manner. So in, instead of pulling the stuff from repository, it allows just to trigger the deployment in case uh, if, you, if you pushed the, uh, the code to your repository and the GitHub did a like reverse backhook. So you, you have the deployment started just because it was triggered by hit GitHub or GitLab. Uh, yeah, so uh, for more advanced guys, so there is a way how to deploy with API. So we have IDEA, uh, Interactive Development Environment plugins that allows just to, to initialize deployment just directly from there. But that's that, that, that's more about development life cycle, not the production one. One of the things I would say is always requested is how to cut the costs. So this is like never ending story for all customers and uh, all vendors, I yeah. would say. 
Uh, so maybe you can share a bit more about like how during this whole life cycle management, how we can, we can help people cut the cost where they are not consuming yeah. something. Yeah, good, good stuff. For example, you have, you have your development team and you have uh, like production environments, which are a lot that just, you, you know, for some period of times where your environments are not like, uh, have not to be utilized. For example, the developers are not developing during nights, but for example, during working hours. So you, there is a way how to hibernate. That's very easy with, with, with containers. So there is a kind of add-on that allows to hibernate those workloads that are not like, uh, not required during some period of times and then wake up back. So for, for, for those cases, for example, if you will work with multi-regional setups, so you and you so then you are able just to 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 hold some resources automatically to to hibernate during night, and for example to to increase number of resources for production just during business hours. So that kind of simple thing allows just to 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 to, to save resources for for other more optimal needs. Yeah, we had a case with the customer and they measured it so like when they enabled this option plus uh, when they uh, enabled uh, vertical and horizontal scaling automated one uh, with all these uh, things inside, they got uh, the, uh, the cost reduction up to 78, if I'm not mistaken, percent. So this is quite quite impressive because they are a software vendor and they they were having like a, lot, a bunch of different uh, uh, development testing stage uh, environments that they don't really need to be active during weekends or at night time. And uh, they had an issue that their developers, they were just forgetting to switch it off before they go away or something. So this kind of system can, can eliminate this human error and uh, give a possibility to cut the cost where you don't really need those resources up and running. Yeah, another nice tool for these guys who are really like more legacy approach, blue-green deployment approach. For example, if you always like want to 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 to, to be like uh, up to date, but you need also just to test something. For example, to do um, A B testing. Let me show, let me show you. We have a tool called Traffic Distributor. It allows you to spin up the environment, or like to clone actually to clone the existing environment to install. Just to, to, to deploy a new code and then just manage the traffic in this like percentage. So you can you can specify how much percent of traffic will go to environment A into environment B. So with this approach, you can just have two environments and just either just to switch from totally from one environment to another, this classical blue green. Or you can always, for example, keep something for testing and just have a part of traffic just just not to, uh, just for example, fifteen percent of your customers go, will go to, to see new functionality and another eighty five will be safe and will live on stable, uh, on stable version, and the the same here related to uh, to approach which by which the, the sessions are distributed. So keep a sticky session or failover. So the thing is really also cool for, for, for delivery application, but that's approach. So that's for those who, who, who like this approach because, because uh, I, as far as I know, for people in PHP world, so they are not very, very like happy about the approach, classical modern approach related to Kubernetes. Uh, so Kubernetes is good. We also do have Kubernetes. We like Kubernetes. We automate everything with Kubernetes. But for so some people, they who just need a simple like PHP runtime, without any extra complexity, so that the Kubernetes approach can be overkill. So that can be too complicated just to run something simple, just also to do Kubernetes management, and it's much more simple just to have the runtime to pull the code, and the other stuff will be just sold by by other other people so same same patch management same version con, 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 runtime control and uh, and etc so that's approach also might work 
uh, migration stuff. So, for example, if you need to migrate your workloads from one region to another region, or for example, from my on-premise environment to some production environment, which is link. So there is an option how to do migration. Even live migration, but live migration is really specific operation, but, but at least the migration between region is possible because you can migrate workload and decode it all together with just with a simple click. Just so to add here, this is this is in terms of uh, multi-cloud as well uh, and deployment that I was mentioning at the beginning. So uh, the uh, this is a demo environment where we have several regions in different locations. But uh, uh, you, as a customer who wants to have this platform up and running, you can have it installed on bare metal. You can have it installed on different uh, infrastructures, service uh, providers. And you can have those all those regions available within this single uh, one uh, um, uh, panel. So, uh, for instance, if you are a service provider with different uh, data centers in different countries, you can add the regions from those data centers, and your customers will get will get the access to all those uh, data centers and regions from this single one uh, uh, entry point, and they can deploy applications and run different environments across all those different uh, regions right from the single um, panel and manage all of them. And if needed, they can migrate it from one location to the other one. And same if you are a private cloud customer, like if you need to have your own installation, you can have this installation like on premise, but you can also add extra nodes from different cloud providers. For instance, if you want to cut the cost as well and have like, uh, or maybe you need more security for some projects and like for the rest of them, it's like less important for you. So you can have like a cheaper hardware for some development projects and stuff like that. Again, you can include all of them, all together and they will be available for your IT team from one single panel where they can decide where they need to uh, to register uh, to deploy their applications and you can even um, kind of uh, uh, provide some access levels whether this team can see those regions or the other regions so again this is quite flexible for them and Igor right now you're showing WordPress yeah class. that's absolutely crazy thing about advanced for advanced um, software vendors who want to pack the whole stuff inside let's say so as I said before in the very beginning so we have marketplace with different applications but these applications can be written also by a vendor by, by 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 a developer so he can do all that automation with, which is which is inside the platform using the embedded dsl language and we have libraries that allows just to utilize it with the api as well so here you can see wordpress cluster so yeah everything <laughs> everything is based on on alma linux backbone and the the, the components which are so which are bricks and the, the, the makes this ecosystem. So with, with this WordPress cluster is just, it is, it is, is just a piece of code. So we have a code package which describes how the components are interconnected. So that's kind of mix of Ansible, Lambda functions on AVS, a column with health charts. So that's a huge mix technology that allows just to, to utilize all of that. And at the end, the vendor can create a simple UI, declarative UI, where I can just specify what options uh, should be done with the applications. For example, I want to install my application and optimize it for a high load. I want to interconnect my application later than after the installation just to, 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 to CDN, to third party CDN. I want to enable brute force. I need to, to download latest version of, of uh, like, database which is which is against cross scripting etc so i can do this dynamically and the, those vendors who are who who want just to do this uh, like in advanced way so there is kind of cloud scripting stuff we, we, the, we have documentation which which has all the description how to use the technology so they are able just to pack their application really in advanced way and even sell it so providers can sell the application which is written by ISV in this ecosystem and automate it in this way. So it's really, really, really advanced. And uh, that also can automate the deployment. In, in the end, you will have a package 
And for example, you can place a widget on a website that will allow you just to spin up the package all together after a single click. But that's it again, the advanced technologies, it's a topic for, 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 for another like webinar, but just to let you know, so this option exists. Great, thank you. Yeah, this this kind of uh, cloud scripting technology and also the uh, point that we have like open API and that you can use API for different uh, um, um, projects. Uh, this helps you customize uh, your projects as well in, in a lot of ways. Uh, because, uh, for instance, uh, we have some customers who have their own software they are building uh, or their own uh, applications that they are creating and building. And they don't really want customers to see this development panel because it's going to be too difficult for their customers to deploy, to scale, to, to keep an eye on that. Even with all the automation inside, some customers are still uh, not that technical to, to see these kind of uh, um, all the settings inside so the uh, the point is like these kind of customers that we have they build their own like very simplified ui or like landing page where they can just click one click installable uh, widget uh, from the marketplace or like their own custom one with the help of this cloud scripting that they can use and as a result the customers they see only the uh, um the uh, simplified version and the um board, for instance if we are talking about wordpress they they will get access to their own WordPress, but the server side can be managed by the service providers or managed service providers or web agencies who are going to manage them inside this panel uh, with different projects that can be uh, in different environment uh, uh, regions or environment uh, um, groups. Yeah, just, just showing an example how to provision a simple plain VPS, which is Container VPS uh, based on Alma Linux. Uh, the the good things it's very similar to VM, so I'm able just to use SSH to jump in, into. I'm able just to do cron jobs, system services. So I can use regular SSH or web SSH clients. So the the system behaves absolutely similar manner as VM. The only difference, it does not pre-allocate resources. So as VM does, it just use, uh, it has only limits. So the customer is able to specify what limit he has like ready just to pay for in case of uh, resource growth, then that's it. So, but in, in, in all that, it's very similar to VM. So you can do 99% of things which are not, not related just to hardware uh, you, I mean, just to 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 to, uh, to third party hardware and etc. So that's for most of cases in web applications, databases, the containers really really great approach. How to how how to run the application just in more uh, in more safe way and in more uh, granular way. So not just to to preallocate something and not and not to pay for resources you are not using. Yep. Yeah, let, let's go maybe through the questions. Yeah, we have we have some questions. Uh, one of them connected with also a Virtuoso um, system, VZ Linux. Uh, will VZ Linux be replaced with Alma Linux? Uh, we still have VZ Linux, so which is, yeah, but I, I believe, yes. I believe in future Alma Linux will be key, will, 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 will replace. The thing is why we still keep this Linux because we there are some of packages we have actually first uh, own kernel built and we have a huge list of own packages which we uh, which we maintain so that was the reason why the the distro still remains uh, as a separate distro but 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 I believe in the end of the story we were going going to migrate to Alma Linux and we will we already build in all our packages which are in Visa Linux just for Alma Linux and we check for compatibility because because Alma Linux it becomes like number one of all our like distributions for our customers so that's 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 I, fantastic yeah. to hear VZ Linux is based on CentOS right now right uh, yes correct yeah so even if you don't uh just 
you know, retire VZ Linux, you could base it on Alma Linux. There's a number of operating systems that are based on Alma Linux right now. So you don't have to retire VZ Linux if it works for you, but yeah, this, this is another option to be a like, decision based on the request from the customers, I would say, and the demand. So for now, for now, we see uh, like growing demand uh, uh, moving to Alma Linux and like many customers are satisfied with this choice. Uh, that's why uh, like the development team is more focused on this improving, improving the um, experience for the customers in that direction. If we're going to see that uh, customers want to keep like some customers uh, uh, want to keep this linux and they are requesting that and like we have high uh demand in that most likely we for sure are going to show to check how we can improve this linux not to have it on centos and but uh on something else like alma linux or uh, anything else and uh, then uh, we will see what to do but yeah for, for now uh alma linux uh, is uh, like the core part uh, and the main choice in terms of uh, operating system within the virtual application platform that's incredible. Yeah, and we also have one more question. Are Alma Linux and Cloud Linux the same thing? I guess, Benny, this is more for you to respond. <laughs> yeah, it's it's easy for people to get confused. When um, Alma Linux was first announced, the Cloud Linux, uh, Cloud Linux was obviously our first and founding sponsor. And the way that it was announced was very like the Cloud Linux team is releasing Alma Linux because they were the first ones to to really get behind it and start contributing to it. It is now a completely operating or completely separate operating system, a uh, completely independent uh, foundation, a completely independent organization. Cloud Linux is still our one of our platinum sponsors. Like they're, they're going to be around for a while because Igor, the CEO, it hugely believes in the need for the free version of Enterprise Linux. And we, but now we've got um, almost 30 sponsors that are backing us, including, including Virtuoso. And we've got a number of people, a number of companies that come to us for all kinds of things. Like I was saying, there's, there's one of our other platinum sponsors is a company called uh, CyberTrust Japan. And they came to us because they needed uh, an upstream, a, a replacement upstream like CentOS. And they're now building their operating system called Miracle Linux on Alma Linux. And uh, it's that that kind of stuff that I think will continue to keep us around. But no, we're not we're not the same thing. We're very different. Cloud Linux has an incredible product that uh, I think um, as a former member of the web hosting community, I will always have a soft spot in my heart for it because I've certainly used it and that kind of stuff, but it's not, we're not the same thing at all. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, uh, then uh, I guess uh, this is more or less that's it because I don't see any more questions. Please guys, if you still have <clears throat> any, sorry, uh, drop- Actually, the... there, was, there was one that I answered in text that we can answer on the video uh, too, so that it gets shared. Yep, sure. Uh, the, the the question was about the number of uh, active Alma Linux installations, and I I answered it specifically there. They said uh, there were po numbers published a while ago. Are there any updates to that? And uh, we regularly, our infrastructure le uh, team lead puts the numbers in our general chat, which are the like that graph is specifically the devices that have both enabled count me. Which allows us to see that they're, which allows us to count that they the device exists, and it that is using our mirror system, and that number continues to climb, and it's still very exciting. That's a a thing that has to be manually enabled by the user, but that number is very very close to one million, and that's incredible to me, um, considering we're only three years old. But the the like mind blowing number is when Apple releases a uh, a. Uh, data that Apple is the it's a thing called enterprise packages or extra packages for enterprise Linux and they uh, their count me data is released regularly and the last numbers I saw for that were around 55 million so like that's Impressive. yeah still again only three years old and that's the kind of uh, support and adoption that we've been able to see from the community at large.
That's true. That's definitely true. Oh, I just got corrected by our infrastructure team. Like he, he reminded me, or he told me, count me as on by default. I thought it was a thing that had to be enabled. So that's okay. It's on. It, it's still an impressive number, right? That's that's definitely impressive, yeah. and that that's a good growth. <laughs> yeah, for three years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you want to learn more about Alma Linux, guys, uh, you can go to almalinux.org uh, website and uh, also get in touch with the team uh, for more details about the project in general. And uh, if you are interested to get Virtual's application platform uh, up and running, uh, for instance, if you want to go on with uh, your own installation of the platform, this can be uh, like on-premise or on any kind of um infrastructure as a service you can uh, drop a message to us at the virtuoso.com application platform uh, we will get in touch with you and provide you with all the requirements and everything that you need to know about that as well you can get some poc and uh, some uh, demo environment to play with and uh, if you are more interested to get up and running already today at uh, one of the uh, uh, Virtuoso application platform installations that are available across different local certified service providers, you can go to the Virtuoso.com application platform partners, and there you will have a choice of the catalog of our certified partners who already have Virtuoso application platform up and running on their data centers, uh, and uh, you will get the same same experience as Igor was showing today of uh, the development uh, panel. And uh, you can up and running, start running your deploying your applications already today. Uh, so make a choice. And uh, if you're going to have any questions, drop a message to us. We will be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you for joining, Benny and Igor. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I have to say, this is the, the power that Virtuoso has these days is absolutely incredible. I am so glad that we set this up just because I got to learn a bunch. It's it's incredible. That's cool. Yeah. Let's repeat in some time. <laughs> yes, agreed. Other topics to cover. So guys, if you have any requests, what kind of topics you would like to cover in the next webinars, we are open to your suggestions and uh, to your questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And wish you a good day. Thank good day. You.